New cases are now slightly higher than the very high levels we saw in early July. In fact, today's daily figure is the largest we have ever recorded in a single day, though it is worth remembering, and I think it's important to mention this for context, that we do more testing now than was the case, certainly in the early stage of the pandemic. Now, we always knew that cases were likely to rise as restrictions eased, and you heard us say that uh, from these platforms in recent weeks. So to some extent, what we are seeing now is not entirely unexpected. That said, the scale of the increase is still a cause of real concern. Although, again, context is important. We know that vaccination is making a big difference. Indeed, that explains why so many of the new cases we're seeing just now are in younger people uh, who are less likely to have had both doses of vaccine at this stage. Around half of all new cases are right now in people under the age of 25. We shouldn't be complacent about that, of course. Young people can still fall seriously ill from COVID, including, of course, through long COVID, which is something that is still uh, to be fully understood. And of course, vaccination, while hugely effective, doesn't provide anyone of any age with 100% protection. In fact, around a third of new cases recently have been in people who have had both doses of the vaccine. However, vaccination does make all of us somewhat less likely to get COVID and it makes us significantly less likely to fall seriously ill from COVID. That means vaccination is still significantly weakening the link between high numbers of new cases and serious harm to people's health. And of course, that's why we are able to take a different, much less restrictive approach to dealing with the virus now than was possible in earlier stages of the pandemic. And it's worth remembering why it is so important for us to do so and to seek to continue to do so if at all possible. Children need to go to school and learn and interact with their friends. Businesses need to trade more normally. That's important for our economy. Uh, and of course, jobs rely on businesses trading as normally as possible. And all of us for our mental health and well-being. Uh, need to be able to live more freely, to interact uh, as close to normal uh, as possible with our friends, family um, and wider networks. So vaccination is helping us do all of that and that is a good and a positive thing. Uh, but, and, and this is the more difficult part for all of us, even with vaccination, we can't be totally relaxed about this surge in cases either. The link between new cases and serious health harms has weakened significantly, but it has not been completely broken. That means the rise in cases in the last week may well result in more people having to go to hospital in the coming days, perhaps requiring intensive care treatment. And unfortunately, a rise in cases like this will still lead, uh, I uh, consider likely to be the case, in an increase uh, in numbers of people dying. Uh, and that also means that if the surge continues uh, and if it accelerates and if we start to see evidence of a substantial increase in serious illness as a result, we cannot completely rule out having to reimpose some restrictions. Of course, we hope not to have to do that. And if we did, we would be as limited and as proportionate as possible. However, as has been the case throughout so far and up until this point, what happens in the next few weeks will depend to some extent, to a large extent, on all of us. This is yet another fragile and potentially very pivotal moment in our journey through this pandemic. And it is a moment to remember that even though most restrictions have now been lifted, the virus is still circulating and we know that the Delta variant is highly transmissible.